Hi everyone, welcome to Deliver Studios. This is another episode of Android Programming. This time we're going to be looking at how to send SMS programmatically from an Android application and we're actually going to be doing this rather in an Android uh, application. We'll be writing the code right now and I'll be showing you on how to achieve this. Walking straight down to uh, Android Studio, you need to start off from the build gradle and uh, we'll be working with a uh, few uh, libraries to get this done. Uh, majorly we we'll need uh, uh, we're going to need uh, uh, a form picker where we're going to actually uh, get to pick uh, the dialing code of a particular uh, locality and uh, we're actually going to use that and uh, we'll need the implementation com.hbb20 that's the CCP. I have a video that actually covered how to set up uh, the picker right there in your Android application. You also need to point at the recycler view. We have the 26.1.0 with the constraint layout all set and ready. You need to sync Gradle at this point and uh, from there you have your application ready and I'll be added straight to the layout. In the layout files we we'll get to see what we need to do. We only have one layout XML which is the activity main right there and uh, from the preview you could see what the application uh, could look like. We have the box which is an edit text to take in the messages you're trying to send uh, via SMS and uh, the phone number picker where we have the dialing code at first with the phone number uh, by the side with the button uh, to actually trigger the send SMS. Uh, we have that right there wrapped around a relative layout uh, where you have the linear layout right inside it with the phone number uh, with the code picker, the country code picker and also an edit text which is the phone text which is actually going to take out uh, the, the real text uh, the real phone number and uh, the send button is just uh, at the bottom the layout sent to horizontal true and you have this as the ID of the set button which you're going to actually use to trigger the send SMS I'll be looking at the manifest in the manifest uh, for backward compatibility with other Android APIs uh, you need to add the permission send SMS very important. You, you, you need to actually lock that right there in the manifest. But uh, if you're actually targeting uh, APIs uh, higher, which is the Marshmallow, the NuGet, and even the Android Oreo, you need to actually integrate the runtime permission. We'll be talking about that right there in the activity uh, because there's some permissions that you need to grant right there when the application is run when the application needs that particular permission that's when you could actually ask the user to grant the permission so we'll be doing that but this we actually undo for backward compatibility if you are running this in a lower Android APIs in the Java class uh, we'll be looking at uh, the main activity that was going to actually enable us send uh, these uh, SMS uh, right there extends app compact uh, we have the text for the message text we have for the phone text, uh, we have the number, the string number, that's just a variable to hold on to the number. The code picker, the CCP objects, uh, the send button, uh, we're going to be using the broadcast receiver, uh, the send, send status receiver and the delivered status. Uh, when you're sending at the same time, when you're receiving, when you're delivering uh, the message. And the, the final integer, which is a constant, the request SMS, uh, which is actually set to zero at the point of use. Now in the onCreate method, you need to initialize the views you created, the message text, the phone text, the send button, and you need to instantiate the code picker. Uh, so you could use the object CCP, and you have to register carrier number edit text. That's the uh, the edit text you are trying to attach. Uh, the edit text, which is going to actually going to be for the phone number with uh, the uh, the phone uh, the dialing code. So you are trying to attach uh, that to become one. So using this our method, register carrier, number edit text with the phone text edit text, you get that done. And now the send button, you need to set on click listener to that, where you override the on click method. So what you're going to do in this our method, uh, you first of all check for permissions. And at the same time, you need to grant permissions if they're not uh, given. For example, if your, AP, your APK is running right there in a Marshmallow device, or yeah, an Android NuGet, you need to actually uh, ask for permission at runtime. So let's see how we're going to do this. First of all, you need to check for the SDK. If the SDK is higher than the 
uh, Marshmallow, which is the version code M. M simply means Marshmallow uh, API. I think it should be API 24. So, so you need to actually uh, target that. So if it's greater than this, uh, definitely you need to run a runtime permission, and you will have to check the permission, check self permission, which is the send SMS, and if uh, the check permission if there's a permission if it's not equals to the uh, package manager which is the permission granted this is actually calling uh, from the manifest if it's not equals to that uh, definitely uh, you're going to actually do something and what you're going to do there's a method called should show the request permission ra the rationale uh, where you're going to pass the send SMS so if it's not this uh, you're going to trigger the show message okay cancel that's a dialogue which you have to say you need to allow access to send SMS and this instantiated the dialog interface where there's an unclicked listener attached to this and on click what you're going to do uh, you're going to actually request for this permission so the user must take action at this point in time now moving further we're going to talk about how to uh, look at all those methods that were called and uh, how you're going to actually use them to uh, to create uh, the permission so you could request the permission right there and if there is a permission granted already, you're going to send the SMS probably if you're running on lower devices or if uh, one way or the other has uh, granted the permission, probably uh, a, this is not a startup application, probably you've actually granted it in one way and in another activity before actually sending SMS. So you could actually uh, have granted permission. So if you've granted permission, you send the SMS directly. Now let's get to look at the send SMS, which is very important. At this point in time, you need to get the full number with plus. Uh, that's uh, the full uh, phone number and uh, you pass that to a string and you need to get the edit text message uh, which is the message text as well you pass that also to a string now you need to check for these uh, values if they are empty so that you should trigger a message if they are empty please enter a valid number or enter some text message so that you won't be posting or you'll be sending an empty SMS but if they are not to trigger the SMS manager but before I go to the main focus of today which is triggering the SMS magic manager we've not talked about how to actually grant this permission where you have the on request permission result which takes the request code the permission itself and the grant results now it's going to test which we're going to use the switch statement to know if the request is the SMS which is what we have exactly one of the grants now if the request is SMS it's going to call the grant results length which is zero and the grant results which is the first index of the array if the packet manager is permission granted so it talks to the mic to, to the user that the permission granted now you can assess the sms which you can send the sms at this point in time but if the permission is denied what you're going to do uh, you need to allow access to both the permission that's the message you will send that this permission is very important for the action you are about taking so you need to grant the permission so that's just it's like a warning because when you're not granted the permission definitely the send sms will not be triggered it's very needed so that should be a kind of message you need to tell the user if the user strike on the deny permission so that's just it and uh, we have the message cancel uh, this when you're actually clicking on okay if that's for the dialogue or you're actually canceling the permission so that's this method that is actually handling that for you so cool let's get to look at the on send sms uh, which uh, is the main focus now you we are that's that's that, that there's a class called the sms manager in the android uh telephone uh api so this is actually going to help you to send sms from your application down to any phone number which you've provided so we're going to actually call the get default where we have the sms object to use and uh if the message length is too long messages are divided so if there's, there's a 256 characters that you need to set up when you're sending sms so once uh, it exceeds that uh, length it's going to break that into two form of sms's so you'll be sending two sms so i think you should if you're targeting just one sms at a time you need to look at the characters that you're trying to uh, bundle up as sms so it shouldn't be uh, exceeding the 256 character length so that's very important now you're going to use a for loop to look through uh, the message you, we need a padding intent here what's the instance of the padding intent we need a callback to know the state of the sms sent so that's why we actually use the broadcast receiver and now we're going to uh, uh, make sure the broadcast receiver is active now we get the broadcast uh, method called the context 
the result the, the request code uh, the action which is the SMS itself and the flags so that's those are the parameters that were sent and uh, you also get the broadcast from the delivered intent that's for the sent intent now for the delivered uh, which is the SMS delivered as you've seen which is the action uh, as the third parameter right there now you send the text message for you to send this text message you need the phone number uh, you need the SC address which you could set to know that's specific to the different carrier uh, you need the message itself now you could pass in the set intent which is the pending intent and also the delivered intent you could pass null null as this if you desire but we have that set up we have an intent uh, which will be listening to once it's been sent and once it's been delivered so all this will be uh, intercepted in the on resume method let's get to look at the on resume method we have the super on resume very important and uh, the sent status receiver from the broadcast receiver I uh, instantiated the class broadcast receiver you can use the object now and you override the on receive method that takes two parameters the content and the intent to which you expect it and you use the switch statement to iterate through this uh, result which is the get result code now you need to test if the result is okay you spit out a different message message sent successfully if the result uh, is an error which is generic failure could actually send a different message if the result also is an error with no service there's no service available so if the results come out with null if there is no radio probably no network uh, to actually get this done so you should send back a result like the radio is off that means uh, the user needs to trigger uh, the, uh, the 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 carrier to know if there's a radio uh, which should be uh, right there turned on so after that uh, let's get to look at some other implement implementations we have for the delivered status receiver now that is for the sent when you're sending now when it's been delivered what messages are we expecting still on the broadcast receiver uh you the on receive method now if the result code is okay cool the message delivered successfully now if it's cancelled in one way or the other you could actually speed out the message as well so at this point in time you clear out the phone text you clear the message text so that there won't be anything to show so it's going to actually uh, depict uh, you need to try or do a new SMS so that's just it and uh, you need to register the receiver for the two receiver that we are using the sent status and the delivered status receive which is for the SMS sent and SMS delivered so once that once you do that uh, you get that triggered and in any registering of receiver you need to unregister when you're not using them so that it's actually not going to be using some of the resources and some other applications could actually need it uh, so once it's on once your application is in the on post mode there's no need to keep on registering the receiver you could unregister receiver at this point in time which you pass the unregistered receiver for the sent status receiver and for the delivered status receiver with this you could actually get yourself acclimatized with the use of sms from your mobile application so you could find a way uh, you could have your uh, attacks to integrate SMS so that uh, on successful or uh, one successful messages you need to send SMS to that particular phone number so with this uh, process you could actually achieve that smoothly and that's actually going to be done I'll be showing you the screencast so that you could actually see how this has been done and uh, we'll be actually uh, looking at sending SMS to a phone number and also delivered and uh, see the, uh, the recipient receiving that same message and uh, we are good to go so I was actually going to be committing this code uh, to my github uh, link and my github account which will be shared in the description of this video I will implore you to strike on that button subscribe to this channel so that you continue to have bountiful bountiful videos when it comes to Android development and from here I'll say thank you very much for hanging out with me throughout and I'll say bye bye